Off to Kamloops. Three and a half hour drive from Belmont to Kamloops, uh, according to Google Maps. Bombers is good. And uh, the roads are nice now. Even though I woke up at 6 a.m., uh, I waited as long as I could until the temperature is now up to like three, four degrees. So that thin layer of ice uh, that was on the roads and parking lots when I woke up is uh, water now. And uh, so the roads should be a lot better. And no precipitation as of this moment, but you never know, we might come around that mountain and uh, there's a snowstorm or whatever. So hopefully not, uh, because last night in the dark, that was some flurry. I mean, I with my headlights on, because it was dark, I couldn't see 30, 40 feet um, of the road or the edge of the road very well. I was going pretty slow. Uh, most of the speed limits posted yesterday, last night, were 100 kilometers per hour, and I was going about 60k kilometers an hour in that uh, in that storm. So here we go. So all the mountains on the east side of the interior of BC are the Canadian Rocky Mountains. And then on the other side of Kamloops, heading west, we'll start getting into the coastal mountains. All mountains are difficult to navigate. If you really want to humble yourself quickly, go climb a mountain. Um, you learn very quickly how dangerous, uh, how smart you got to be in order not to die. They will, uh, they'll put you out of business pretty quickly if you don't know what you're doing. I suggest if you're going to go start climbing mountains, mountaineering, uh, start off with really small mountains. Uh, you know, if you're trying to reach the peak of them. And that'll help caliber your brain um, as to what you'll need for the uh, larger mountains. But they whip you into shape pretty quickly. So another thing I wanted to mention was I weighed myself. Now I don't know how accurate my scale is, but uh, it told me I was 245 pounds. Now, yeah, I, I put on quite a belly. Uh, I do every winter. I fluctuate 20 to 30 pounds from working 60 hours a week in the summer, landscaping to not doing much in the winter not burning nearly the amount of calories that I do in the summer so I mean when it's minus 35 there's not much you can do I can you can't even go for long dog walks bombers last about 10 15 tops in minus 35 so But yeah, I could easily, you know, raise a family up here in a cabin, deep in the mountains, live off the land. I have a couple animals, farm animals, you know. A horse, a dairy cow, a couple dozen chickens. What else? 
Um, probably wouldn't have a pig. I like ham. But, uh, yeah, I'd stay away from pigs. What else? I've never gone hunting before. Um, if I did go hunting, it would be for substance. Like I would, I would have a rule, rule for myself that I would have to eat the whole animal, whatever I ended up killing. And I don't like venison and I don't like elk. Venison is deer. I don't like deer. I tried black bear once. Wasn't a fan of that. I did like moose. I love turkey. So I think the only things that I would permit myself to hunt, because I know I would eat it all, would be moose and uh, turkeys. I don't think they have wild turkeys out here in BC. Apparently they have some in southern Alberta, but in, ta in Ontario, uh, Ontario is littered with uh, wild turkeys. Um, grouse, I could hunt grouse. Basically a wild chicken. I could eat that. Quail. Nah, I think they're too small. I think they're even smaller than like a Cornish hen. I think a Cornish hen is like the same, what you would get from hunting a grouse. What else, anything else? Oh yeah, caribou's okay. I'd hunt caribou as well. But, yeah, that's about it. Now, that's not to say if I was starving in a survival situation and I, I mean, I would eat anything if I hadn't had food for a week. I would hunt anything. Oh, it's so nice to see green. I've seen studies on, you know, people taking a brain scan while they're looking at these different pictures that they present to them while they're, they are presently taking these brain scans. You know, and they show them all kinds of pictures. But when they show them pictures of uh, beautiful forests, the brain lights up in certain areas that release uh, dopamine, the pleasure hormone. And then I notice, uh, you know, if a, if a forest is completely deciduous, there's no evergreen trees, no coniferous, then it's just dirty white. But, uh, thank God for evergreen trees.
should be a nice drive getting there. I hope my uh, camera is at a good angle for you guys and it's not like pointed at the roof or something. I hate it when that happens. I don't have patience for editing. It's a uh, very tedious work, very time consuming. Plus you have to watch yourself over and over again. Plus I don't have a really good editing program. I gotta ask Steve Wallace what he uses for editing. Well actually I already did. He uses the uh, software that comes with an Apple MacBook or whatever. He's happy with that one, but I, I don't use Apple. I'm an Android Microsoft, Microsoft guy, not because I like it more, but uh, just because I don't have the, the time or the patience to learn uh, an Apple computer and or an Apple phone with all the new icons and uh, all the different places where the settings are and blah 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 Okay, well Let's hope we see We can check off my list Some more wildlife, you know like a couple elk would be nice. We I already saw a bighorn sheep Um Buffalo, mule deer. Okay, what's number one, two, and three on my list? Number one, lynx. Number two, cougar, mountain lion, puma. And number three, ah, oh, let's throw in a, either a black or a grizzly bear. But I've always wanted to see a lynx in the wild. And if I did see one, it's like winning a lottery ticket. Okay, so it started to sleet here. So I'll just take a little longer getting there, drive slower and safely. Catch up with you guys in a bit. Hope everybody's all right here. Doesn't look like an accident. Maybe the truck just broke down or something. Huh? What are they working on here, I wonder? Oh, big truck went in the ditch or something. Thankfully, it's nice and warm today. I chose a good 
a week, a good week to do this. You definitely don't want to travel at night when it's like this because all these like this puddle right here that's going to be black ice and then you get a bit of snow on top of that you can't see it and if uh, you're not careful you could end up in the bottom of that ravine there and there's no cell phone service so not only could you drive off the road down into the ravine and if it's snowing um, your tracks going off the road down there would be uh, buried pretty quickly and if nobody was behind you or, or in front of you to see it happen nobody would know that you're down there and if you were still alive it would be up to you to get out of there So let's hope that doesn't happen. Actually, I read a story recently of a guy that ran off the road and he had a Jack Russell Terrier, his dog with him. And the dog stayed by his side the whole time except to uh, go up the hill and bark at some people and get these people to follow him back down the hill and show these people his owner trapped in the car in the bottom of the ravine. So, Bomers, the question is, would you do that for me? <laughs> would you? Huh? I wonder. Are you sleeping? All you do is sleep, sleep, sleep. Okay, and now the roads are beautiful. It must have not rained here or snowed here last night. Cause it's bone dry. Beautiful. It's not even any uh, snow on the side in the ditches. So that's not great for uh, forest fires next year. Like, this is all really dry. So, I mean, what's a spring without snow melt and rain? Because if you don't have snow melt or rain in the spring, you're going to have a bad summer. Look how dry it is over here. Incredible. Hardly any snow at all. Right, Bombers? Hmm? So I would say I'm out of the Rocky Mountains by now and I'm into uh, B BC interior, the interior of British Columbia and it's, uh, you know, the mountains are a little smaller, um, the uh, array of trees that grow here are slightly different. 
I think there's a big, a bit of a rain shadow over the BC interior. So I think it's, it naturally is a little drier, but I don't think it's supposed to be this dry. Not in the winter. Are you cozy now? Are you comfortable? You want the window down? It's a lot nicer driving on dry roads now. Don't have to worry about slipping at all. And we got uh, almost two hours to go to Kamloops. But he's got to pee, so I'm going to stop in the next 15 minutes. And uh, we'll get out, stretch our legs, and go for a little pee. Okay, quick little stop in Clearwater, BC to grab a Subway sandwich and there's a pet food uh, place right beside it. So we, we went in there for a, a doggy treat, used the washroom, and now we're ready to go to Kamloops. We got one hour, 22 minutes left according to Google Maps. Head west toward Myrtle Crescent. In 50 meters, turn left onto Myrtle Crescent. Take the next left onto Myrtle Crescent, then turn left onto Park Drive. Nice quaint little town. Cute little houses. Take the next left onto Park Drive. Pretty much all the amenities you would need. But being a landscaper, I don't see a whole lot of work out here. In 100 meters at the roundabout, take the second exit. Puppy dog. Exit the roundabout. Continue for 123 kilometers. Beautiful. I'm having fun. This is great. And the, you know, every half hour or so, the terrain and the the species of trees that are present, they, they change a little bit because, um, you know, whether the elevation is changing or um, the closer we get to the ocean or how big the mountains are, everything's a factor, right? All right. Watch for falling rocks. See the rocks all over the road there? Tell they fell from that cliff. See, now I can go 100 kilometers per hour. No problem, because road conditions are perfect.
hitchhiker. No, cyclist. I'd love to live out here. So peaceful. You know, I live on that White Ave Street. It's called White Ave in Edmonton. It's like the Bourbon Street of Edmonton. Parties every night. I think I'd probably I'd probably get pretty lonely out here too. See, at home in Edmonton, we get lonely. I just go for a walk, and there's thousands of people I end up talking to. I'm just going for a 15-minute dog walk. Okay, thousands is an exaggeration, but depending on how long I'm walking for. Uh, I get stopped constantly. Oh, you have such a beautiful dog. What's his name? How old is he? Male or female? What breed is he? Blah, 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 blah. Same questions all the time. Probably the most common one is, uh, oh, what breed is he? And when I'm tired, I will reply, what breed are you? <laughs> it's a dog. His mother was Rottweiler, his dad was German Shepherd, but I don't know. I, I just find it a little silly when people are talking about their dogs. Oh, and, uh, oh, well, um, so what kind of dog do you have? Oh, well, uh, he's a purebred this, and his father was a purebred golden five-star, blah, 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 blah. It's like, shut up. Is it a good dog or a bad dog? Volmer's here, you know, he's 14 human years old now, but in his prime, he's a breed of his own. You know, when he was four or five years old, if there was a dog that could grow up domestically but then given some random circumstance had to live in the wild Homer's could totally do it he was ripping salmon out of the uh, Souk River and eating them once he figured out how to catch them you know salmon are kind of sickly uh, towards the run the end of their run and then after they breed, they die. They die anyway, right? So, but he would catch them, grab them, chase them, catch them, grab them, uh, throw them up high up on the riverbank. 
then put his paw to hold it down while he ripped the head off and then ate the head first. And I found out wolves will do it exactly like that too. So true story, uh, living on Souk River, the doorbell rang one day just as I was getting out of the shower. So with nothing but boxers on, I looked out the window and it looked like two police cars. So I went down to the front door and I opened the door and it wasn't policemen, they were conservation officers. And they were both smiling. And on the porch surrounding them was uh, 11, 12 dead or almost dead coho salmon. You know, some of them were still twitching a little bit. And they were all on, uh, on my porch surrounding my doormat. It was like somebody had dropped it, dropped them all there. Kind of like a, a cat will bring a mouse or a bird home and leave it on the front doormat. Same kind of thing. Anyways, and then the conservation officers, they then pointed to the dog who had just come up the hill with another coho salmon in his mouth. And while holding the coho salmon in his mouth, you could see this giant smile <laughs> behind the coho. And uh, one conservation officer turned and said jokingly, we're guessing he doesn't have his fishing license. <laughs> so they were really nice. And they, uh, they said, we're gonna let you off with a warning, but if he continues to do this, then we're gonna have to come back and, um, you know, lay charges or whatever, whatever that charge would be. off they went so it wasn't long after that that the salmon run had ended and all the said all the salmon were dead already But yeah, he never he never hunted and killed or caught and killed anything else. Even squirrels, he's he's been chasing his whole life. He loves chasing squirrels. And but one day he managed to uh, catch a red squirrel off guard, and he ended up right on top of it. And he basically just kind of put his paw on its tail to hold it there. And he just held it into the ground without biting it with his uh, snout. But not causing any damage to it. Like, so he's not really a, a natural born killer, are you? Which is fine. I'd prefer he didn't kill animals. Except for fish. But, you know, fish don't have any feelings. According to Nirvana. See, imagine having a farm out here. You know,
few cows, few horses, few of everything. It would be great. Look how small and cute the houses are, too. You know, nobody needs a big house. Everybody has too big of a house for what they need. <laughs> a different kind of car wash.
see how, how it looks. Not bad. Hey guys, okay, so it is dark now. I made it to Kamloops, uh, took him to the river. Uh, didn't want him to go swimming because then the vehicle would smell like wet dog. Um, but I really needed a shower. So I went to uh, the YMCA and they, uh, well, first of all, there was no parking there. They didn't have a parking lot. And all the uh, spots on the street were full. And then I went went in there and they wanted uh, 15 bucks just to use the shower. So I called Steve Wallace, my friend, who also has a YouTube channel. And um, I asked, asked him if he had any pointers on Kamloops, anything to do. Um, where can I boondock? And of course he knew right away. He said, go to the Petrocan as you're leaving Kamloops to the west um, of the city. There's a A&W there and blah, blah, blah. So I Googled it in two seconds. Sure enough, came here and great little spot. You know, it's mainly for um, transport trucks, but <sighs> Kamloops Travel Center, and upstairs there, you go in and you pay uh, 10 bucks for a shower, and, or um, plus $3 for um, towels if you need them. And then you can also do laundry. They have uh, cheap laundry machines, only $2 for the wash and then a dollar to dry. So that's extremely handy. And then I can get my gas and my blueberry muffin all in one shot. And then I'm going to see if I think this parking lot over here, I can park and just sleep in. So, um, let's get, I'm not quite tired yet. It's only 10 o'clock. I'm going to get a small coffee, blueberry muffin, top up my gas in case it's more expensive tomorrow. And, um, then I'm going to go see if I can park over there. Okay. Hey, sleepy ad. Are you already tired? Hmm? What would your ears look like if they stood up like that? See, that's how they're supposed to. The ears are all floppy. <laughs> your ears are floppy like your character is floppy
So don't ask me to convert it, convert it to uh, gallons. How many liters are in a gallon? One and a half? No, I don't know. You guys can do the, that Googling at home. be full though. I'm really good at estimating by looking at my uh, gas needle here. And I got my... I decided not to get a coffee. And blueberry muffin. Well, there's blueberries in it. Lemon poppy seed. Chocolate chip. Dates. Bran. Fruit bran. Carrot, cranberry, double chocolate, maple walnut. Sounds good. And I asked the nice lady in there if I could park over there, and she said it wouldn't be a problem. I said, I don't need to pay. And she said, well, you're sleeping in your vehicle. No. She said it like it was obvious. Do you need to go pee? Yeah, let's take you for one quick little walk. All right. Good morning. Um, wow, okay, great sleep, but... <coughs> One thing I never mentioned is I'm very allergic to dogs. And there's nothing I can do about it. Apparently there's medication you can take to help and stuff, but whatever. I just usually tough it out. And it's always, it's only ever bad in the morning. <sighs> yeah, well, I never told you I'm allergic to humans. <laughs> How was your sleepy poo? Okay, so let's get up and get dressed here. Am I recording? Yep. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get Bomber's a whole bunch of water. I will be back with that. And while I am getting water, he can have his breakfast. I'm just gonna get him. He didn't eat all his breakfast yesterday, so. I don't wanna waste any food. Come here. There you go. Okay. If you eat that, I'll give you more. Okay. Oh, ho, ho, ho. good morning. Where's my morning snuggles? Huh? Okay. And I also, oh, have some cookies to help them. Oh, look at all these cookies. Jeez. Here, we gotta hide them in here. There. <laughs> You better eat that.
There, hopefully that's all gone by the time I get back. Okay guys, sorry you had to see my uh, morning face. I hadn't quite put on my makeup yet. But yeah, I'm gonna take Bombers for a quick little walk. Get the business out of the way. Um, it, this is here where I stayed last night. That's where the showers were on the second floor there. And I'm going to be heading west for Vancouver. I think it's about a uh, four hour trip around there. But I'm gonna leave that in part three and uh, throw all of uh, yesterday's footage into a video for today. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks for following along. Great sleep, just other than I woke up really stuffed up because I am al allergic to Bulmers. And apparently he's allergic to me too, so. Okay, uh, all right, we'll see you in a bit. Ha, ha, ha.